Hi, this is Joey with Torque Link. We're going to explain to you how to use the Ski Doo Tuner Pro. Uh, first thing we're going to explain is how to uh, load the definition set. So, if you see this button right here, you want to first thing you want to do is select XDF. The XDF is your definition uh, for the tune file that we're going to use. And by definition, I mean what's going to define what maps are in there, where the maps are in the tune file. So we want to click select XDF and this one here uh, have it set up just for a demo version. Uh, we're going to select on yours you would have whatever model year, whatever version, uh, whatever sled you're using you would want to have matching XDF with your tune file. But this one we're just going to say you know blank blank do gen 4 uh, version nothing. Now the next thing we'll want to do is select open bin. So on this one, this is our bin. The bin is the tune file. So we're going to select this bin, aka tune file, and this is model year blank blank do 850 demo. So now when you first open it up, uh, it might just look like this. So when you, the, what I always do, you can look at it different ways. So you can go to ordered list, it'll show you everything that's available, or category, and that's where I have everything organized. So the first thing you would do is look at fuel. Uh, in Within this, you would have uh, fuel, exhaust valve closed, PTO, mag, I can open one up quick. You just click on it and it'll open. You can also click on it and close it. Uh, we have ignition base advance and also ignition high elevation modifier. We have exhaust valve. So the exhaust valve, uh, there's two maps. We have exhaust valve open. This is when it opens. So this is zero kind of refers to closed. Uh, 30 would be 38% open, 60 is 60% open, and 100 is fully open. Now there's a table that says open the exhaust valve to this position. Now for it to close, it would have to alternate to the closed position. So you can see that in this middle area here, if we compare these two, there's a little difference in this, I guess a 60% area between the two. And what that does is keeps the valves from bouncing open and closed uh, on you at a steady throttle, uh, which would kind of create like a surge right at a certain point. So you have actually have to go above a certain RPM or throttle position for it to open. And then you would have to actually drop back quite a ways for it to go the other way. That eliminates that flutter. Now we also have limits, uh, rev limits. Anytime you're changing limits, you know, I would kind of just change them all. And then uh, break in. So break in is what the fuel is doing during, uh, during break in at different, uh, at different pipe temps and RPM. So fuel comp, you know, it's giving you uh, quite a bit extra fuel during certain versus your your standard mapping uh, ignition comp during break-in is taking away ignition so we have fuel comp exhaust temp so what the fuel is doing uh, to the exhaust temp and RPM so you can see it doesn't do hardly anything unless you're over a certain amount at a certain exhaust temp and then I'll add. Ignition comp, exhaust temp, so during these it'll actually take away a little bit. Uh, how much oil is the oil quantity map? So this is uh, oil volume. So if you start adding fuel you're going to have to add oil to maintain your ratio on the skidoo. Knock tables, knock threshold, 
pretty simple. It has to hit a certain reference value for it to start uh, applying knock. You can see on this one, uh, up in here, 100 means it's not doing anything uh, because 100 is 100% of the allowable noise um, before it actuates. Uh, and you can see as your RPM comes up, it lets you get away with a little bit more noise just because higher RPM motors do make a little bit more noise where at the lower RPMs, uh, where they can kind of get ping and knock happy uh, down here the acceptable limits quite a bit lower and then injection properties uh, you know the amount of injection advance and then we also have system targets so AFR target and this is a uh, an estimated AFR uh, kind of like a virtual target there is no AFR sensor, but it knows how much air and uh, fuel is going through a machine at given throttle percentages and RPMs, and it can guess uh, what it has to do to hit a certain AFR. So that is this table here. Uh, and you have above AFR target above a certain uh, elevation. Uh, we also have it in lambda in case you're a lambda thinker. Uh, I personally think in AFR not in the lambda and you might say like these AFR targets right right in this middle area when there's no way it's running uh, 19 to 1 or 18 to 1 but if you actually put an AFR gauge on your machine in these areas you're gonna see ridiculously lean readings and it's not because the engine is actually compressing this ratio and, and firing on that ratio, but it, more air is going through it than it's firing fuel for because until the pipe starts working, it's not trapping everything that goes through the engine. And that's the nice part about the DI and, the, and the, the, how that system works is only the air that's trapped in the cylinder will add fuel to. So when you're not trapping everything, all of a sudden that exhaust or that air that blew through without any fuel with it mixes with the, the burnt uh, exhaust, you'll you'll get higher readings than the engine is actually running on, if that makes any sense. So if you see high high mid-range AFRs, it's normal. And target pipe temp. So this is uh, your target pipe temp. Basically, your EC will do everything it can to get to this temperature. If you raise this, it's going to do everything it can to run hotter. If you move this down, it's going to do everything it can to, to cool off the exhaust. And then we have target muffler temp. So, and then we have this one here, which is estimated muffler temp versus pipe temp. If there's readings outside of this in comparison, it may throw a, an error if you are put a muffler on or, or whatnot and it's running cooler than it thinks it should be. So that's why if you have an exhaust system, uh, get one from a reputable manufacturer. Uh, I know working with Bikeman that uh, everything they design, they design to run at the same operating temperatures as a stock muffler does and they put a lot of work into it. So it is valuable to get a, a muffler that is designed to work with your uh, setup. Now, let's go over how to make a change. So say we're in an exhaust valve open part of the map. So you're at an RPM where your exhaust valve is open. Uh, you want to richen up your PTO side. Uh, at the top here, you can see this is throttle position. And at the bottom, you'll see down here in the comments, it says fuel, TPS versus RPM, base fuel quantity, exhaust valve full operation or open position. So, and you can see across the top and across the side, we have RPM or throttle position across the top, RPM down the left side. If we want to make a whole block uh, richer, say we want to go, you know, one or five percent richer, right? So you can highlight a whole area. And you have to think in math numbers. So five percent is uh, 0.05. So since we want this original value 
plus 5%, we would say multiply by 1.05. Uh, if we wanted to go 5% leaner, we go 0.95 because we want 95% of the original value. Uh, 1.05 equals 105% of the original value. So just to show you, I'm going to make this modification. So now, boom, this area has changed. Uh, let me do one thing before I actually make this change. So we're going to say no. Uh, we're going to file, save as demo and then we're going to say uh, first test trial you can label it whatever you want right so then now when we make this change we're going to go back into this we're going to highlight this area uh, we're going to make make that area five percent richer now we're going to click this this says commit changes if for some reason we made a change we don't want to commit we X out and it says, do you want to commit the changes? No. So we can go back in. We do want to commit the changes, so we'll add those. Okay, boom, they're added to this area that I highlighted. If you want to make some changes down here, boom, you can go, you know, 0.95. We want to be leaner down there, right? So now we want to commit the changes. So now the changes are committed to the open file, but we really haven't committed the changes to the tune file until we click save as and we want to do the first test trial because that's our new file that we're making and click save already exists we want to replace it yes so the neat thing about this is we will open up all right so I'm gonna open this and I'll bring it down in just so you can see it So now this is the new file it saved when we did it. So the neat thing about saving this first test trial bin before we made the change, it'll create this uh, log. And in this log, which it opens on a different screen on my computer, sorry. It'll say fuel exhaust valve open PTO change. So it'll let you know what you change within each uh, tune that you make. Say you want to make uh, add a, a degree of timing but we only want to add it at 100% throttle, uh, 7250 to 7800, right? So we'll go 7250 to 7800. We want to add, so now we want offset because we want to add, we don't want to multiply. We're going to go one degree more. Boom, one degree more. Now we want to commit that change. Now we want to save this because we're not making a new bin file. We're just going to save as first test trial and it's saved. So now we've made a change to the timing, we've made a change to the fuel. Uh, if we wanna change when the exhaust valve opens or we wanna delay the opening, we can go like this. We can bring this up to uh, 38 because we wanna be at 38% open during this area. Now we're gonna to have to make a change to the close map as well. So you wanna go 38. And now we've made a change to the exhaust valve. Easy peasy. Now say we want to let the RPM go. Uh, you're going to want to open up all these RPM limits. If you want it to be, uh, you know, 9500, click 9500, enter. 9500, enter, and then save it. 9500, enter and then save it uh, the rest of it's just different areas that you can be in uh, if you advance the timing it's not going to want to rev as much if you decrease the timing it'll rev out more so if you're doing a twin pipe thing and you're trying to get it to rev out you might want to you know take some timing away above you know where the stock mapping is because you want that to to kind of fade away and let it rev. If you want to make like a drag setup, uh, you want to probably increase your 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 low end. 
Oh, so I made a change that I didn't want to do. I can just X out. Don't activate it. Now I'll open it back up. So then we want to go like this. It's good to show you how to make mistakes too. So now we want to offset two degrees more, right? Boom. Two degrees. We're going to do another two degrees here. Now all of a sudden we add a bunch of timing in the mid, mid range. And it's going to put a lot more heat in the engine. So you need to make sure that if you're adding timing, you have the right amount of octane, uh, the right fuel flow with it. If you're switching to race gas, you can get away with more timing. But if you go to race gas, you're going to have to lean out a little bit. So usually, you know, you can get a couple degrees more of timing, but you want to go like three to uh, four degrees leaner. Uh, you can do exhaust temp. Uh, if we want to, you know, let it come up a little bit higher, we can make this, you know, like 102 fill with value because we want to change a whole block to a certain number. We go 102.5. And then we're making a change to let it run a little bit more heat in the pipe before it starts adding fuel to, to bring it back. We'll commit it. Uh, we'll commit this. And we'll go to file, save as, and we can make this number two or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can also make notes in here. So say you had, you know, uh, you know, uh, plus two timing, you know, minus five fuel or whatever modifications you did. If you have a little system that, that you stay consistent with, uh, it seems to work pretty good. The more notes you keep uh, or a log book of what changes you're making within each tune, the easier it'll be to tune forward. Uh, that's pretty much the, the gist of the uh, Skidoo uh, Torque Link uh, Tuner Pro operation. And if you ever, you know, think there's something in here that you want that isn't in there, uh, you can definitely get a hold of me, let me know. And, and if you want a video like this made on a different vehicle, uh, add it in the comments and we'll go from there. Uh, Joyce Drew, over and out. Make sure you like and subscribe to stay up on all the uh, latest tech videos.